Today we're taking apart a Toyota AB60E. Let's get into this. Tail housing, 14 millimeter. Sometimes you can move it on with some pretty thick silicone and you have to give it a good shot to take it off. Next, the bell housing bolts. And again, sometimes a little tap is needed. bunch of 10 millimeter bolts and these transmissions are kind of notorious for having rusty bolts so you sometimes have to end up breaking bolts and doing thread repair so these are your two wiring harness connectors there's a breather on the top and you want to be careful with this part it gets a little rusted in here. These stupid things are about $175, so you want to be careful with them. Next, speed sensors. These are both the same. Next, And this could definitely be a problem, is your manual lever position sensor. Oftentimes this bolt is going to break on here. So if it looks really bad, I take this off later. After I remove the valve body, I'll take this whole shaft out. But this one looks like it'll be all right. See, I'm prying on the nut behind on the switch itself. So when you have this out, you want to wire wheel this down and, and clean it all off. That's your adjustment bolt. Now you have all these tabs that are locking down this little set nut. You can see this is all crudded up in here. So let's hope it comes apart. So this isn't coming off, so we're going to have to take this out from inside and pull everything out, and then we can work on that later. Kind of unimportant right now, though. Um, pump bolts. As you can see, there's silicone on these bolts. Which is going to keep them from leaking. Transflu transflu it's like somebody worked on this, and they kind of did lobbed it up a lot, but you don't need quite this much. Now we're going to flip it down. Hopefully we can get these pan bolts out without breaking any.
kind of lucked out here. Some nastiness on the magnets, but this to be expected, this transmission came here because it didn't work. So next, to flip it up, and we'll take the filter off. It's like this whole ring is pinched out of here. This might have to do with the failure. Somebody might have changed this filter and kind of squashed the O-ring in there and then transmission ends up sucking up air and it's going to cause all kinds of problems. Next, we're going to take all our solenoid connectors off. These, there's kind of a trick to it. You got to get in here and then push them out that way. Okay, it's all clear. Now you have your two temperature sensors. One of them has blue wires and one of them has orange. So if you want, you could put a little O there for orange in case you think you're gonna forget. There's also two brackets underneath here. And these are all ringed in, so you gotta pull them up a little bit. And as a side note, some of these have two temperature sensors and some of them only have one. Most of the ones you see are gonna have two though. Now, there's a set of bolts to take out for the valve body, but we're going to start with this detent spring. all our bolts over here this needs to come out this is engaged into this component here take our wiring harness add these two brackets that's our valve body assembly okay underneath here we have three accumulator pistons the springs. You want to keep these together because they're all different. The next couple things we have here are a check valve and that's got a little ballpoint pen spring that you don't want to lose. Then we have another accumulator piston. And you want to take a look at this because oftentimes they'll score up and they'll score the bore in the transmission. So you either put a new factory one, you could polish this up, or there's aftermarket ones that have O-rings that are going to give you a better seal. Okay, after this, we have these three seals. And sit between the valve body and the case. Now we're going to take these three oil delivery sleeves out. As you can see, it's a metal tube and it's got a little rubber end and this pushes against clutch drums inside the transmission. Your valve body kind of sandwiches it in there. Okay. Now we're going to try and deal with the shaft. There's a metal sleeve on it that's dented down at the factory to keep the sleeve from moving. 
So this sleeve is to keep a roll pin from falling out, which is never gonna fall out anyway. It's kind of um, belts and a suspender why this is on here, but it is. So what we do is we drill the stake out of it. All right now we're gonna have to find the roll pin and drive it out. You guys could see it well. There's a little window inside this sleeve that we just released, and in there is a roll pin. So now that the sleeve is moved, we're going to be able to drive the roll pin out. And this is not a normal rebuild procedure that you have to do. We're only doing this because the shaft is so rusted up that we're not going to be able to get anything off of it. So hopefully this is out far enough. <clears throat> could drive the shaft through. Still having a little trouble. That's all right, because we can still drive it through from the other end. Okay, so we're going to be able to address this later. Um, we keep these shafts in stock, because a lot of times there's nothing you could do with them. And you just throw the thing out and you're going to replace it and usually you're going to have to replace the switch as well now we can take our wiring harness connectors out sometimes these really get stuck in here main connector and this is an additional connector. We're also going to take this whole parking rod assembly out. Now on to the clutch rooms. You could gently try here and remove the pump o-ring here, it's bearing here, bearing race, and you're going to have another bearing race down here. Clutch drum. Now there's a lot going on in this clutch drum. You have a sprag. plastic washer and a couple clutch hubs. To get the clutch hubs out, you're going to have to remove this snap ring. This is your one clutch stack up. As you can see, these are pretty burnt. 
hub, a hub inside of it with a bearing here. Now you have some more hubs in here. Plastic washer, another bearing here. And we have some more clutch plates. These are your forward clutches. When you put this in here, this clutch pack comes on. These are your forward clutches, these, these look fairly decent. In here we have another Sprag or one way clutch. And there's also a washer that goes in here. We have another bearing here, and we have another clutch pack. And these are like a coast clutch. They really don't do too much other than provide engine braking when you're going down the hill. And these look good too. Down here, we have another snap ring, and this serves as the bottom backing plate that this rides against. Underneath that is the exact same snap ring, but this holds a clutch pack in. And these are really cooked. So you can see this is metal to metal, which is kind of common on these things. This clutch drum is basically third, fourth, and fifth gear. So th these are the issues that you run into with these things. They'll start setting solenoid codes, which is an indication of the transmission slipping. Really doesn't have anything to do with the solenoid. Okay, further in here. Get rid of this plastic washer. I'm trying to do this from the side, so bear with me. These are your second gear clutches, and these are starting to cook. And a lot of times what happens is people will put a supercharger on these transmissions and it affects the calibration. And sometimes it's going to um, burn the clutches on out for you. So, you know, the best bet is if you're, you're doing a supercharger is to get the valve body done first, and it's usually going to prevent the transmission failure. Not always, but usually. And we have another snap ring under here, and this one's pretty heavy. Okay, this snap ring is tapered. There's a taper on this side, and this is the way it needs to go into the case. Flat side goes back. Now what we have under here is a center support, and this is a really tight fit in the case, so sometimes it's kind of difficult to remove. The best bet is sometimes you could flip it up, give it a couple taps. Sometimes everything will fall right out. Okay. Planetary sun gear. There's a bearing set down in here that's captured. So if that's bad, you're gonna have to change the whole planetary. There's a, a bearing race on top of it, which rides on that Torrington bearing. Another bearing here plastic washer, the race for this bearing, another sun gear, another planetary, this hub, and another plastic washer, 
By the way, we changed all these plastic washers. They don't, they don't really go bad like you think they would, but um, it's good to put new ones in here. Now in this support, you have another sprag. So you always want to check the sprags because they're an issue in this transmission. This is a clutch drum. So we're going to go all the way with this. We take this out and there's a piston, etc. This set of clutches, again, is something that's starting to burn. Now we get down to another snap ring. And this is holding a return spring into the case. Pull this out. And this we could usually pull right out. This is your clutch piston. Underneath here, we have another set of clutches. All right, we've got to try a different angle so you guys can see better. Another snap ring in here. And there's another clutch stack up. There's a spring retainer at the bottom of the stack up. Again, these clutches are burnt. Now under here you have another clutch drum. And um, hopefully it comes out without a fight. And now this is one of the more difficult parts of disassembling this sometimes. You have a whole center support in here that's retained by a snap ring and this is a real tight fit to the clutch so it doesn't, doesn't want to come out unless you get it exactly straight. Getting there. And again, this is a tapered snap ring that goes this way, and the flat side of the snap ring faces the back of the case. Now for the support. You gently move your output shaft. We got lucky that came out. And again, we have another one-way clutch in here, another sprag. And if you take a good look at this one, these flats that's starting to get a little beat up here. So this is something we're going to want to change. Another clutch hub, bearing race. And on the sun gear, we have another bearing and we have a big thick bearing race down here as well as on the other side we have another bearing race and there's a bearing down here in this rear planetary as well as one in the back and another bearing race that sits down in the case And this is your low reverse clutch set. These are usually something that doesn't get damaged, but you know, we end up changing them anyway. So that's kind of it for now. I mean, there's more sub assemblies to take apart, but you know, we do that during the more of the disassembly and cleaning process. 
please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell.